Well, hello there. This is Making Records with Eric Valentine. That's me. And I'm back, mother... Uh, <laughs> I guess... Um, well, I'm swearing already right out of the gate. But uh, I'm just excited. I'm excited to be back doing this. I've missed you all. And uh, yeah, this is going to be super fun. Uh, I think I'm finally going to be able to start this up again. Uh, so this episode is not really like a full-on music thing. Um, I'm just uh, trying to explain what's been going on, where I've been, and what's going to happen moving forward here. So, um, so what's been happening is a lot. <laughs> it got kind of crazy. Um, you know, I, there was just a million things going on. I, you know, for somebody that's supposed to be mostly retired at this point, uh, it was, it's really got bonkers. Um, so, you know, probably since the last time I've, you know, been here doing this, um, I recorded two records. <laughs> One of them finally just got announced so I can actually talk about it. I made another record with Nickel Creek, which was incredible. I always love working with them. They're just an absolute treasure. Uh, so that was awesome. Uh, I got some really amazing footage of uh, working with them. We recorded at RCA Studio A. Incredible place. It was totally amazing. Uh, man, that is an amazing studio. So I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, so we'll be able to you know check some of that out later down the road. Um, the other record is not announced yet, but uh, so I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Um, artists like to be able to announce their own releases, you know, so, uh, got to leave that up to, up to them. Uh, so there was that, um, I sold a studio, uh, finally took forever. It was such a drama. Oh my God. It just, it was nuts, uh, trying to make that happen. Um, so, you know, there was, uh, that's everything just kind of piled up, you know? So, um, between, trying to be a dad and a husband and a record producer and um, an audio company owner and try and manage this huge um, renovation project of the new studio that's being built here in Vermont. Like, it got super crazy. And, uh, you know, I had like four or five full-time jobs, none of which uh, I was really <laughs> able to give the attention they probably deserved. And, uh, and so you know, I had to kind of, um, make time where I could and, you know, anything that wasn't totally essential, um, I, I had to just, uh, give up. Sadly, the YouTube channel was one of the non-essentials, so I apologize for that. Um, but, uh, I think things are a little bit under control. I'm not making any records right now. Um, you know, I'm back in Vermont. I'm focusing full time on finishing the, uh, studio renovation. And so, I think it's it's going to be more manageable. Um, I, I'm not going to dwell too much on the the dramas of getting to where things are at now, but man, it was it was really crazy. And um, you know, the main issue was selling that building, 1014 Vine Street, um, that housed uh, both barefoot recording and undertone audio. Um, that really slowed everything down. You know. Um, I'm just going to do a, a quick, quick overview of that um, and a little bit of money stuff in there, how it relates to the music business might be interesting. Um, it was kind of a, you know, enlightening for me uh, in that process. But, you know, so I, I was supposed to sell that thing in six months because um, uh, you can do this thing called a 1031 exchange and it saves you on taxes um, and, uh Missed that, <laughs> missed that window, so I didn't get that benefit at all. Uh, that was kind of a bummer, and I had to sort of reevaluate things at a certain point, um, just because <laughs> the tax differences were massive. But uh, um, so that happened, and uh, and then also at a certain point, um, you know, uh, we were in in the process of buying the the property in Vermont, and. Uh, we realized, oh, okay, this is not going to sell in time. I had an initial buyer. And this is some of the, one of the crazy things about it. Um, had an initial buyer, signed a purchase agreement, just got an open escrow. Here we go. You know, I, I was totally happy with the offer. Everything was great. And so <laughs> the guy was just a crazy person. And, um, and 
so he just wouldn't put in a deposit to open escrow and kept saying like i i just wired it here it, it, it i promise you it's it's going to land there tomorrow you know sometimes it takes a while for wires to go through okay great we'd wait a few days nothing would show up and uh, it was just bizarre he just kept saying like okay now i've really sent it and it's after i for sure it's going to go through this time i talked to the bank and then nothing would show up. And that was going on for like three or four weeks. And then finally I was like, this guy's just crazy. I don't know what's going on. But here's the thing. And it always depends like how you choose to look at things. Is I would have never got this property in Vermont had that crazy person not made that offer at that time. Because that offer gave me the confidence to move forward with making the purchase and putting down my deposit um, to open escrow for, for this place. Um, and so as flaky and crazy as he was, ultimately he, I, I, you know, credit him for me actually being able to get this place. And, you know, the reality is like, I could not be happier uh, that we, that we have this amazing place in Vermont now. So, you know, thanks to him for <laughs> whatever, at least making the offer and making it happen. Um, so there was that. And then here's the thing that was really sort of, you know, revelatory about the whole process was that, um, you know, there was a, a million dramas. There was uh, like another 10 flaky buyers after that that all said, I'm going to buy it and then didn't, you know. And so it just went on and on and on and on forever. Um, you know, I missed... Uh, the 1031 exchange. I missed, uh, we had to get a bridge loan then to try and bridge the, the, the gap in time. Of, you know, thankfully we, we qualified for that. We missed the deadline for the bridge loan. That was exciting. The bank was incredibly forgiving and we were able to, you know, not get totally in trouble, but uh, keep it going even longer. And, um, and so then, you know, after all this crazy stuff, it, it became very apparent that, um, that studio, you know, was designed to record bands. That's what I did, you know, where people go in a, human beings go in a room and play musicians and you put mics in front of them. That's really what that studio was set up for. And the reality is, is that in this day and age, just because of the way things have changed, people that do that type of music recording can't find, can't afford to buy a, a building like that anymore. And here, here's the really sort of sobering, you know, statistics about it. So I bought that building in 2000 for $700,000. And around that time, maybe shortly after that, um, is when everything really sort of peaked for me um, as, as a, a record producer. And I was doing these all in budgets. And I think the, the, the highest I got was just under a half a million bucks to make one record. So like one album budget, um, you know, was close to being able to buy that building. And now, you know, album budgets for bands that were sort of in that stratosphere back then, if you look at it now, their album budgets probably between a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars $200,000, something like that, you know? So the budgets are anywhere from a, f a fifth to a fourth, you know, to a third of what they were. And that the property ultimately sold for three million bucks. And there's just, there is no way that people working in that genre of music could really justify or, or just even have the the funds to be able to purchase a building like that. And so I thought that was very revealing about, you know, just the state or just how things have changed in the music business. Um, it's super real, you know? And, uh, and so I had to, I had to pivot a bit and try to make it more appealing to people that were more in the sort of like, you know, pop and urban and, you know, electronic production world. That's really you know, sort of the <laughs> winner take all realm of music production. Now there's just like this elite few artists out there that are really, you know, do very well. And kind of everybody else is starving at this point. Um, and so, um, so it was interesting, you know, it, the, the, the way that studio was set up, that really just didn't have a buyer, you know? So there you go. That it was a big drama. It took forever. I had to shut down the whole renovation project for about six months um, because it hadn't sold. 
and um and there's like this i don't you know i don't know if this is had happened to me since i had sort of made that transition and i was you know had a steady flow of working on records for um you know for major labels and was had major label album budgets and stuff um but like in the course of trying to pull off this crazy ambitious thing of like selling that property i have to buy a you know, buy this property in Vermont. I also have to buy a, a property to house Undertone. So all of that needed to happen. And um, and so <laughs> there was a point where, uh, I mean, de- weeks, weeks before, uh, you know, Bear- Barefoot actually finally closed and sold, like I was really about to have zero dollars. <laughs> I was really like for real broke. It was, it was so bonkers, you know? Um, and I just, I hadn't experienced that in a long time. I've been super, super lucky, you know, in my life and my career. I'm very grateful, you know, for all of the opportunity that I've had and, uh, you know, been able to live very comfortably, <laughs> you know, um, I have no complaints, but man, that was, that was, you know, super crazy. So, so all that happened, um, and then we were able to, I, I sold it, it's great, ultimately went to an amazing group of people that I love, that um, love the space, it's like a multimedia company, they do TV and film and music and all in, as one sort of, you know, company, and um, there was a, a, a guy uh, that heads up the music department that I knew from before that, and um, they love the place, they appreciate the history of it, and, you know, are going to ce- continue to celebrate the history of the studio, and... I'm just delighted that they're in there and it all worked out great. It sold for exactly what it should have sold for. Um, there was a bunch of other dramas with like uh, the expectations of what that place should sell for. Um, it was just way out of whack, <laughs> you know, and there was all this incorrect information um, about the square footage that was actually in the L.A. County, you know, records that it was 7,200 square feet. It turns out it's only 5,800 square feet. That got realized along the way. So it was like, whoa this thing's actually worth a lot less, you know, in reality than what, you know, the reasonable expectation was, would be. I was just wanted, you know, whatever the sort of average commercial real estate really sells by the square foot. And so there's sort of like a, a current comp um, comparison of what stuff is selling for. And it was about 500 a square foot, you know. And so, um, you know, so ultimately it's it sold basically for about that. And that's great. But you know, that was another sobering moment along the way. It's like, whoa, this is actually worth, I don't know, three quarters of a million dollars less than we originally thought, you know. Um, but uh, somehow it all managed to work out. And I'm here and I couldn't be happier to be here. I love being in Vermont. Uh, this property is amazing. The renovation is going on, um, is coming along incredibly. Um, and so this is what's going to happen. And, and actually... There was one more thing that I, what was really, really important along the way that I wanted to mention, um, and it had to do with this stuff about, um, uh, you know, I made very specific choices. I am very calculated about how I do things. Um, I had all kinds of spreadsheets of, you know, how the all the money would work and how this would all happen. And, and I realized I cannot make good decisions with bad information. And I had some... Uh, fatally <laughs> inaccurate information in a few key places, like the square footage of the building. I got some bad tax advice, a few things that made this like, wow, super crazy. So whatever, enough about money stuff. I've, money's super fucking boring to me. I don't, I don't really care about it at all. I'm not motivated by money, but I was trying to like, you know, do this fucking dream and <laughs> it just kept getting in the way. It was pissing me off. So uh, so we made it. Here we are. Um, so, so yeah, the renovation is going on great. It's actually really getting close. It's getting super exciting over there. Um, just in the last couple of days, starting to put up all of the acoustic treatment in the control room. Oh, my God. Uh, doing sound tests in the control room. Super excited about that. Um, but there's a lot that's happened that I haven't covered. And so this is this is what's going to be happening with the YouTube channel is... I am going to um, basically catch everybody up over the next few months as the studio is being totally finished. I think two, three months, um, this place will really be pretty much fully functioning. And so um, 
And so it'll take that time to get everybody ca caught up with where things are at because I've, I've filmed a bunch of stuff along the way. I just haven't had time to post it. And so um, so that's what I'll do. You know, there'll be like at least every week there'll be another episode about the dramas, trials, tribulations of trying to <laughs> do a massive renovation in Vermont. Um, and it will catch up to the point where I'm finishing. Then we'll go real time basically as the, the whole project is being finished. So I'm really excited to share all that stuff with you. It's crazy stuff. There's, you know, it's mostly construction stuff and there's some audio design stuff in there that might be interesting. There's some really crazy sort of unrelated stuff that was just, you know, just kind of bonkers, you know, um, just trying to <laughs> deal with this crazy, wacky old barn. So, um, so hopefully that'll be, uh, entertaining. And then once we get past that, we'll get back into music stuff. So, um, uh, you know, for those of you that are just here to watch me dig through Pro Tools sessions and do mixes and production deconstructions, you know, you can, you can potentially skip these, but, um, but yeah, I think there's some, I think there's some fun stuff in there. So that's, what's going to happen again. So happy to be back. This is going to be super fun and I will see you in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>